Hello peeps and welcome back to Mod of Minecraft with Night Dagger and Kozak Wolf episode 20. Um, Kozak Wolf is not on for this episode. He got tired and went to bed a little early tonight. So, I'm on here alone. Um, as usual, episode 20 means a world download. So, check the description of this video for the latest world download. And any config files that might have changed, I'll probably just re-upload all the configs with it just to be sure. Alright, so... Off camera, here's what I've done. I went back through here and I reworked this nightmare of a build to be a little bit more compact. As you can see, the engines are actually running right now, filling these redstone energy cells. Now, you can also see right now that I have the two networks cross wired because I want to get these things topped off, and we had a few leak problems specifically regarding a change that I made with the farm that were causing a little bit of problems. On the subject of the farm, it's not a farm, it's farms. I went ahead and reworked the one 5x5 five five farm we had into three 3x3 three three farms. This one here is a pure arboretum. This one here is a pure crop farm. And this one here is half orchard, half rubber. How are these being powered? Well, I will show you. <clears throat> if we pop down here, we'll jump down here. They are being powered by a single Tesseract feeding through three redstone energy cells. The three redstone energy cells have been throttled for a maximum output of five Minecraft joules per tick in order to keep them from running too fast. Because the forestry, or the orchard here, was running pretty much non-stop. And it was just burning up a crap load of power. Now, I want to do some automation this episode. Get some things going here so that we don't have to worry too much about it. And we have to do something with this honeycomb because we have just got ridiculous amounts of the crap. <clears throat> so, let's start with the farms. And then move to the honeycomb. We'll take this ME cable that I made off camera. And... We have an interface in here as well. We are going to need to make a couple more things. We're going to need an export bus. We're going to need two more interfaces. Actually, we're going to need four export buses. Maybe just three. I don't know. We'll find out. But we do need at least two more interfaces, which means we need conversion matrices, which means we need basic processors. I found some basic processors sitting in the iron furnace up there. So, we already have a few up, a few of these made up. Let's go ahead and turn these into conversion matrices. We need some quartz for this. We're going to need some glass. We're going to need some iron, which we have a decent amount of now. And we're going to need some redstone, which we're running short on again for making all of those things. Alright, so... We just need two more interfaces. We'll throw all of this stuff in here and let it make our two conversion matrices. And then we'll throw two pieces of cable in there and that'll make us our two ME interfaces. Let's go ahead and run some cable out <coughs> to the farms. Which we're just going to do right off of this cable here. Now this is going to increase our energy usage a bit, so we're going to have to be mindful of that. And actually, I think, yeah, I think I want the cable running across ground level. On each one of these, we are going to put an ME interface. We'll put one there one there, and one here. We need to connect these to the ME network, which we'll do like this, and then watch what happens to this when I connect it to the network. Oh, all of the stuff that was in there is miraculously gone. You'll see something very similar happen when I connect the rest of these.
all of the wheat that was in there is now gone. Oops, did not mean to do that. And let's just run this cable right along here. Just like that. And boom, all of the wood and everything there is gone. Now we're also going to need to supply fertilizer to all of these farms. Yeah. Maybe not the wheat farm right away. Maybe not the tree farm right away, but we definitely have to supply this orchard. So, the way you do that is with an export bus. Which is going to require another interface if I remember right. <clears throat> Alright, so Emmy cable, piston, interface. Yep, we need one more interface. Which means we need another conversion matrix. So, one, and what are we missing? We have the iron, we have, the, oh, any cable. There we go. And the export bus is going to require that plus a piston. So let's get a piece of wood, some cobblestone, We'll take a piece of iron and a piece of redstone out of here. No. Break that down. That gives us the piston. Piston gives us ME export bus. And let's go put that on. But we're going to need a single piece of fertilizer in order to do this. We're going to come down here and we are going to tell this farm here via this block right here which will just connect like that. Hey, you need to export fertilizer into this system. And it is smart enough to only export fertilizer into the slot necessary, which is pretty awesome. Now we're also going to need to arrange for the export of dirt over to here, fertilizer over to here, and all of this stuff over to here, but I will do that off camera now that you've seen how it works. Don't think it's really necessary to do it on camera here. But we're now supplying our farms automatically, which is awesome. There's something else we need to supply automatically. We seriously need to automate all of this honey, honeycomb crap. Because we have so much of this that it's not even funny. Like seriously, not even funny. Hence, the centrifuges and the squeezers that I have. Let's put the squeezers away for now, and let's put as much of this honeycomb in here as we can. See if we can clear up the inventory a little bit. And let's come over to here, and somewhere right in here, let's go ahead and put our squeezers. But first, we're actually going to need a little more redstone energy conduit, I think. 22 pieces, that might be enough. Connected to the bottom of this, I have a redstone energy conduit. My next goal is going to be to extend that energy conduit. Damn. It's okay. We'll just do it this way. We're going to extend this conduit under the wall here to get it outside. And I'm going to need to build a bridge across here. That should do it. Okay, so 
That is the bottom of that machine. That's the wall. Right here is where we're going to want the conduit to come up, I think. So, we'll run the conduit just like this. And one nice thing about redstone energy conduit, for those of you who are familiar with Buildcraft, and this is something I don't think I've ever actually addressed on camera, redstone energy conduit and Buildcraft pipes behave very differently in terms of power loss. A Buildcraft pipe loses less power over short ranges. Um, a golden conductive pipe will only lose about 0.1% of its total power for every square it travels. Right? Now, Redstone Energy Conduit loses 5%, which, you know, when you first think about it, nah. When you first think about it, that sounds like a lot, right? 5%? Holy crap, that's a lot of power loss. However, it's 5% across the entire length of the cable. It doesn't matter how long the cable is, the energy loss is 5%, <clears throat> which suddenly makes it not so bad. All right, we'll attach those, and now we need a way to connect these to our ME system in here. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to place a waypoint here that'll tell me where we need to get to. <clears throat> and I'm going to drop down into here, and try to align myself as best I can with that. And we can come in here and replace this floor later. Alright, so we want this cable to be nice and hidden until it gets out here, so we're going to run it underground. And I think I want it to come up right here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not good. Leave me alone. Uh, there are times when I hate making things look good. <clears throat> Because this would be so much easier if I didn't care about cables going all over the place. But I do. So, it's a pain in the ass. How are we doing for a match here? If we go over this way. We should get pretty close to hitting it. Yeah. Right here. Good deal. Let's drop this down about two more. Now we just need to run this back over to here, and I think I'll just go like that. Alright, so now we just need to run some ME cable out here, and then camouflage it. So, we're going to have the cable come up here, did that connect to something? No. Just looked like it did for a second. Come on. Now, another change that I should probably mention that Kozak and I did make to the mod pack, and you can add it if you want, it's not required, but we are now running Monster Spawn Highlighter as well. Because we had some very close calls with some creepers and some very expensive stuff. We said, you know what, that's it, we're pissed off. We're tired of them. Let's go ahead and make sure we don't have any more creepers. At least not near our base. We don't really care about wild creepers. We just don't want them blowing up our shit. Alright. It wouldn't matter if that connected there, but... <clears throat> hmm. Let's go ahead and connect it under here. There we go. We now have a connection out there. And if we turn on 
Monster Spawn Highlighter, we should see that ME Cable cannot spawn mobs, which is good. Let's turn it back off. Alright, now we just need to export some stuff to it. Damn it, come back here. Alright, let's grab some chow. We have plenty of apples now. Alright, let's put this away, and we'll put all of this crap away. We're going to keep the processors because we need to make three export buses. And we're actually going to need to make six export buses, and we're going to need to make three import buses, so I need to make uh, three more of these basic processors. Let's get some gold. Let's get our quartz knife. Let's get some silicon. And there should still be some redstone in here. Good. And we'll do gold, redstone, quartz knife, silicon to get some basic processor assemblies. I didn't grab enough gold. Let's do this again. Oh, I really hope I don't lose power. It's been storming here. That would kind of suck. Alright, so. <clears throat> put the silicon away. I'll put all of this crap away. We shouldn't need it. And the redstone energy conduit we're going to keep. We're going to need a little more of that. Let's go ahead and make six export buses. Which means we need six interfaces. We're also going to need some import buses. So we're going to need a total of nine of these interfaces. Which means nine conversion matrices. Hi, Weebles. What are you doing in here? Thought I evicted all of you. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab our basic processor assemblies here. Throw those in, get nine conversion matrices. Now we need nine of those. So let's throw some ME cable in there and some iron. We need export buses. We're going to need some wood. We're going to need some cobblestone. We're going to need some iron. We're going to need some redstone. Because we need to make... nine sticky pistons. Or nine pistons. Actually, I'm just going to make eight. Now, six of these are going to be normal. And slime balls we have plenty of due to the proximity of the swamp. And we have a spare sticky piston in here. So we'll just grab him, save ourselves a little issue. All right, so export buses are as so. And throw the iron back in there. There's six export buses. And then an import bus is pretty much the same thing, except the import bus uses a sticky piston instead. So three import buses. Good deal. Now what are we going to export? Honeycomb. Lots of honeycomb. No. Get back in there. All right. Hey, knock it off. Knock it off. Get out of there. Alright, and I will come back and patch the holes in the ground off camera, but I'm going to have to do a little more work down there, I think, so I'm going to hold off on it for now. The ME cable, we're going to have come up through here. We're going to have it connect to three export buses on the top. and three import buses on the side. Turn these things around so they face the right way. There. 
each one of these export buses we're going to tell to export dripping comb, stringy comb, and honeycomb by the stack. Same thing here. Same thing here. We should, <clears throat> in very short order, see this get to work as soon as we dump some of the stuff into the system, which we're going to do now. Did it, did it, did it. And some more. And there's actually even more out here, but we'll deal with that in a little bit. If we come over here, we should see a whole bunch of uh, different combs being handled. <coughs> hmm. We should also be seeing the export buses, or the import buses, taking this stuff out. But it doesn't seem to be doing it. wonder why. Why is this not working? Oh, derp. <clears throat> now it's set to stack mode. Why is it not moving by the stack? I don't know, I don't get it. You gonna work now? Nope, still not gonna work. Okay, that's fine, whatever. Now, the next set of machines we're gonna set up are the squeezers. <coughs> hmm. Which are right in here. For these, we're gonna need a few liquid ducts. We got plenty of those now. We're gonna need some of this redstone energy conduit. We're gonna need these export buses. We're gonna need some ME cable. Right over here in front of this pipe, I think. We're going to hook up some liquid ducts. In front of that, we're going to have some squeezers. <coughs> in front of that, and underneath it, we're going to have some redstone energy conduit. Loud cats are loud. All right, four, three, two. Almost perfect. Patch that back up. The squeezer should now have power. Now all we have to do is connect the export buses on top of these. Connect that with a little bit of ME cable, just right over to here. I'm not a fan of that. Break that. Good. Let's head back into our base. Grab Squeaky Kitty. Grab some of our honey drops, which you can see we have a crap load of, and some of our honey dew. over here in the squeezer. The import bus is on here. <clears throat> We're going to set these to import stacks of honey drops and honeydew. That is going to quickly load up all of our honey drops into here and start producing some good old honey for us. Give these things a whack. Get some redstone. I think I'll just put three redstone torches there. And now we can start filling this ginormous tank here with some good old liquid honey. And lots of it. 
Now, the honey drops are also going to give us a chance, if I remember right, it's either honey drops or honeydew. Let's see, uses for honey drop, no, uses for honey drops. Carpenter, squeezer, yep, you get a 5% chance of propolis out of squeezing honey. So at some point here in the not too distant future, we're going to end up with some propolis in there. We are going to need to account for that. Start patching this up with a little bit of the excess dirt I've pulled up. We are going to need to account for that by putting a few more export buses on there. So we're going to need three more processors. Uh, let's see here. Gold. Cutting knife. Silicon. We only have one piece left. So we're going to need some quartz dust to cook up into silicon. Wait for it to show up. There we go. We are going to need a little bit more redstone. Quartz cutting knife, gold ingot, redstone, silicon, basic processor assemblies. Chuck those in there. And export bus. Go ahead and load the recipe. Let's see. I need some cobblestone. And you and you gets our pistons. Three more basic processors. Let's see. And recipe for the interface, recipe for the conversion matrix, quartz, processors, redstone, iron. Recipe for the interface adds cable and glass. Recipe for the export bus adds cable and pistons. Let's take these out and hook these up. And with this, we actually don't even need that. There we go. Now, if we do get any propolis in here, it should get pulled out. <clears throat> but of course it's not. What a pain in the ass. Okay. I know a way to handle it, but... It's going to take a little bit of doing. We should be able to pump these things out using a redstone, or using a Billcraft pipe. So we can just pump these out and pump them into an ME interface, and that should get rid of them for us. Um, I will do that off camera, because it's going to require me to make some redstone engines and stuff, and it's boring shit to watch, so I'll fix that off camera. We come over here and check this redstone energy cell that's feeding everything. We're holding a nice steady 600k. No problem. Now we do need to connect this to our system here. Which means we're going to need one more of those ME interfaces. I don't happen to just have one sitting around, do I? Of course not. Gold, quartz dust. You know what? I'm just going to cook up half a stack of this crap. Oh, hush. Fine. Out. Out you go. Get, scram, shoot, beat it. There, happy. 
and now you want out. How did you even get in here? Okay, come on with me. Out you go. All right. Anyone else? No. Okay. Basic processor. We need to make this conversion matrix. There we go. Interface. Piece of ME cable. Some of that gives us our interface. Good deal. Now we'll come out here. And feeding from here, I think. Wait. No, it's coming in through here, isn't it? Yeah, this will work. Although I may need some more ME cable before all said and done. Let's go ahead and put a piece of ME cable right there. Feed it under the ground here. No. Jetpack. Jetpack. Thank you. Still getting used to this jetpack. It's kind of finicky. There we go. And screw it. Punch our way up through here. Drop down. Put that in place. Put all of this crap back in place. Turn the jetpack off so I don't have to deal with it so much. We'll clean out the interface here. Break this chest off, and we'll just place our interface right on there. Gold pipe will connect. Anything that gets popped into here will get sent for processing. Matter of fact, we can pop pretty much anything we want into here. It'll just get sent back to the system. And that should handle that. Now we have a way to automatically process our honeycomb. It'll process the honey drops and the honeycomb for us. You can see it's already pulled all of the honey drops out of the system. We still have 800 and some honeycombs to process, which is ridiculous, but... Well, that's what you get when you start dealing with massive amounts of honey. And bees. Which, by the way, I'm not sure if I ever mentioned. I did go ahead and make the bees rainers as well. Yeah, rainers. Um, basically, all of our bees, our cultivated, our industrious, all of those bees now can work in the rain. So they're nocturnal and they're flyers. And they're all purebred as such. So I have about seven minutes left. There's one more thing that I want to address off camera, or on camera. We have accumulated crap loads of almost dead grafters. This is annoying because a grafter with absolutely no hit points left on its bar, if you use it on a leaf, it will break the leaf, but it won't trigger the effect of the grafter. You won't get the sapling. Which means, once these things get down to the point where the bar's totally empty, they're useless. They're junk. You, you can only throw them away. It's annoying. We're going to fix that. How are we going to fix that? Using another mod. We're going to go back to Ars Magica, and we're going to produce the Arcane Reconstructor. I heard something move. Oh, never mind, it's the forestry farm collecting apples for us. That scared me for a second there. All right, um, so Arcane Reconstructor. Purple dye, stone, and a diamond. Easy to do. Uh, we only have one purple dye, though. We should have... We don't have any rose red. 
I know we have a rose. I know we have lapis. There we go. Two purple die. We should have plenty of stone. And a diamond. Pop that in there. And bam, Arcane Reconstructor. This thing is awesome. Pop it down right there. <clears throat> the Arcane Reconstructor uses magical power to reconstruct your items. Now, because I never got around to replacing the spell when I died from before, let's go ahead and get a spell parchment. And I need to make the Sense Energy spell. Parching Wind, R, S, Sense Energy. Green, orange, blue, purple, standard. Green, orange, blue, purple, blank. Green. Uh, yellow. Lapis. Purple. Do we have any blank runes? Yeah. Alright, so let's combine these to get our orange. And orange, purple, blue, green, blank. Where is it? There it is. So, green, orange, blue, purple, blank, spell parchment, sense energy. If we come over here and we sense the energy level on our vortex, you can see it's at 327085. But what's this? There's a lightning bolt effect going here. And our vortex is draining energy. Oh, this thing is gaining energy. Well, what happens if we toss our grafter in here? Look at that. Isn't that cool? What's it doing? It's fixing it. It's repairing our grafter for us. When it finishes one, deposits it in, deposits it in here. And done. So now, we don't have to keep burning up grafters, and therefore bronze, and sticks as valuable as sticks are. Yeah, really valuable. Another thing to note, the forestry tree breeding mechanic, sometimes you have to proc a block update in order to be able to see leaves changed, like this one here. So sometimes you might have to go through a book to somewhere else in order to get the leaves to change color. Or break a block next to it, but what fun is that? Alright, are there any other leaves that have changed color? No. Some of you might have noticed this sapling over here. You also might have noticed the fact that it hasn't grown yet. It's because it's not an apple sapling. It's actually a common walnut. We got one lucky random mutation out of these trees, and haven't seen it since. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and put this spell back in my book. Hundred and ten buckets of honey. Oh yeah, a bunch of propolis. Great. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's 
grab one piece of ME cable. I had almost just enough ME cable to do this. As a matter of fact, by the time we get done making the other interface, it's going to be just enough. That's kind of scary. Alright, so we have the export buses here. You know what? We actually needed these anyway, didn't we? Let's grab a couple pieces of fertilizer and a piece of dirt. And let's jump down here and oh man. Yeah, it's not going to work, is it? Okay, so... I can connect this one. Fertilizer about stack. And I can connect this one, I just gotta change where this cable comes through. So export bus there, cable there, now we drop it down to the ground, there we go. Export bus here is going to be fertilizer by the stack, export bus here which we'll connect using our last piece of ME cable, it's going to be dirt by the stack. Now, let's just make sure it's not going to overload us with dirt. Nope. Looks like it's fine. Alright, so, I think we've gotten a lot accomplished this episode. How's our storage looking? Mm, starting to get kind of full again. Not too bad. Once we get this honeycomb cleared out of here, that should help. How's our storage looking? 12k, 5k, yeah, we're fine. Might even... Take a piece of honeycomb. Let's just take one of each comb. And pop this drive into the preformatter, not the metals drive. Pop the forestry drive into the preformatter, and we'll just add all of our combs to that. Reformat. Pop that in there. Now we can come over here. take all of the honeycomb out of there, dump it in here, and then if we come over here and we go comb, and we take out all the stringy comb, the honeycomb should already be placed in there. We'll throw that in there. That should have cleared up a lot of space for us. Yep, we're looking a little better now. And I'm at about the 45 minute mark now, so I'm going to have to call it. Um, off camera, before I do the world upload, I am going to go ahead and try putting a solution to get these, get the crap out of here. Um, not exactly sure how I'm going to pull that off with all these cables in the way, but I'll see what I can figure out. Anyway, this has been Night Dagger with Let's Play a Mod of Minecraft Season 4, Episode 20. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far, and we'll catch you next time.